closing on December 26th. Um, so uh, Christmas Eve is on a Sunday. Christmas is on a Monday. Um, our policy states that if a paid holiday falls on a day that an eligible employee is not scheduled to work, such as a weekend, the employee is given the paid time off on another scheduled um, on another day during that same work week. So since Christmas Eve and Christmas Day fall within the same work week, and we already have a number of people that are off during that time, it makes it very difficult for scheduling purposes. Um, we did this last year as well. We closed an extra day so that we could accommodate those pay days off. Um, so I'm asking the board to approve being closed on Tuesday, December 26th, um, which will then uh, mean that we won't have to allow anyone else to take any of their paid time off that isn't already scheduled for them to make up for that, that paid holiday. I'll make a motion to approve the closing of the library on Tuesday, December 26th. Second. What happens to uh, New Year's? Yeah, um, right? yeah. it's not it's not as problematic because we're not closed on New Year's Eve. Eve. New Year's Eve yeah. oh, okay. So yeah. it's just we've got the two and both of the Christmas Eve and Christmas Day fall in the same pay period, work week for us. Yeah. Okay. And so that's what's problematic this year. Okay. So yeah, so New Year's should be fine. Okay. Do I don't know that we need to take a vote on this, do we? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Roll call or voice vote? Yeah, I have a roll call. Okay. Who's that in court? Novick? Yes. 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 Computer room renovation. So, um, in your packets, you have a number of. Uh, is that what the purchase order is? Yeah, um, yes, the, well, okay. yes, the yes, purchase so order that has not, not, have not been yes. ordered yet. It was, this is the quote. Um, we are. Uh, we would like to uh, redo some things in the computer room. Uh, right now, we have those big heavy carols in there that the computers, the public computer lab uh, is using. Makes it very difficult to use that space for anything else. Um, we are planning on removing the cabinets as well and repainting that room to brighten it up. Um, it has been a dream of the Adult Services Department to uh, modernize some of that furniture, um, make it a little bit more flexible so that we can reuse that space. Um, for some other things. So um, we did have a couple other quotes. Uh, this was the cheapest one and had the furniture that we liked the most. It matches the desk that we have in there. Um, this would uh, allow us to remove the carols. We'd replace them with tables uh, with uh, removable dividers so that we could, uh, we'll create you know, three foot workspaces for the same number of computers, but then we'll also have some tables that'll just be open for uh, people to come in and use their laptops. Some people want to come in there just for quiet, more quiet study space, um, printers, that kind of thing. So um, I'm asking the board to approve the purchase of the tables so that we um, could get them uh, purchased out of this year. We do, as I mentioned earlier, have a, a construction and progress budget. There is, right now, there's still currently $56,000 in that budget line. Um, and so we would have more than enough money without having to access any of our special. You said it's this, it doesn't cut down on the number of seats. No. It doesn't bring it up. It does not. Well, it gives us free, it, more free space. It gives us some more free space. Um, it makes it a lot more flexible for us. It does not eliminate the number of um, computers that we have. Yeah. Was there not a sink in that room? There is a sink in that room um, that we will probably remove. Oh my God. Because right now the sink is only being used for a uh, water. It's probably a polar bear though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. After the kitchen, Dave may just say, "This is it. I quit." <laughs> that is the that is the the goal. We don't anticipate as many problems in that section because it is one of the newer sections of the building. I know. And now that I said that, I probably jinxed it. But <laughs> but um, the electric's sure good up there. This? I mean, I, that I do know is the electric's good because I already retrofitted yeah, the lights and all of our outlets. 
So I am asking the board for approval to. I'm just wondering what's judgment. behind that cabinet that the sink was running into. How much mold is back there? I'm pretty sure that's been dry. Yeah, that's, that's dry. I don't think we've had issues with that sink. You know, you'll never see it if there wasn't. <laughs> The wall's going to become black, huh? <laughs> no, I, it, you know, it, I mean, it could very well be a brick wall behind and all We're that. Not sure yeah. We're not sure. We're not sure. That's why I'm not, I, I mentioned that yeah. last word. <laughs> Probably not that. Yeah. Sorry. I'll make a motion to approve the computer room renovation. And you have to, I think, say the amount. Yeah. Uh, oh, the amount of... $7,408.44. I don't recommend the forty. <laughs> no. <laughs> Anybody who's that is that. Just furniture. Though. Yes. Correct. Yeah. And then um, Ron and Dave will be doing most of the. Yeah. And Dave and Jeff will be doing their free time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And their copious amount of free time. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, Monzo. Yes. Love it. Yes. Thank you. Minus 44 cents. Minus 44 cents. Gonzalez. Yes. Ray? Yes. Just don't, don't correct me at the minutes. <laughs> don't don't let me say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the next one is the stage lighting in Baxter Auditorium. Um, my apologies. Uh, you do have a write up uh, done by Roger Goss, who handles a lot of our indie stuff. Um, about the auditorium lighting renovation proposal. Um, as for the states, uh, what the lighting that is in there is less than adequate, particularly for performers and presenters, and we have, in fact, um, just in the past, since the beginning of this year, um, rented stage lights for three different programs, at least. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to, you know, provide correct lighting for the types of programs that we're, we're, we're doing um, and having to spend some money on that. So the proposal is to replace that lighting with appropriate stage lighting. This is um, the lowest quote that we got, and we did try to get three. We only got two responses. Um, the other two quotes came in at over $20,000. Um, this is also a more local company. The other companies were from Chicago. Um, how, how do we account for the difference? Any? It, it's a variety of things. It could be a different type of equipment that they recommend. Mm -hmm. It's just it, we would have to, you know. It, it just it scares me when it's, it's significant. Renda has I, we've actually rented lighting from them. Renda has uh, worked with them. Um, maybe that's part. And the, it could be as mm -hmm. well. I mean, there's you know, I mean, sometimes yeah, it is who you know. I, I've and, just gone through some reconstruction. Yeah. The part, um, so I, I think we're very confident that they can do the, a good job. It's not just the lowest quote. Yeah. So. Um, so okay. I think um, the other nice thing that if the board does approve this, um, it does make uh, the uh, changing of those lights uh, much easier. Everything's done from like an iPad and that kind of thing. So it would be very easy for any of the staff to learn how to do it. Right now what we run into is that um, there's only a few different people that can come and they have to be in the building when we're running programs because it's so complicated to kind of get the right light. <laughs> so, um, so it would also make it a little bit easier for us to present some of those programs. Is this also coming out of that construction yes. line that you've yes. About? So again, we would not have to touch the reserve funds at all. This would be coming out of the um, construction and progress budget line. I will motion to approve the stage lighting in Baxter Auditorium for fifteen thousand. $11.64. Oh, we're only a dime over now. We're getting closer. Thomas here? Yes. And Yes. Great. Yes. Yes. Check. Yes. Monzon? Yes. No. Yes. EBS proposal? Um, I'm, I'm asking for board approval of this. This was actually budgeted for in the 2017 budget, but I did want, because of the amount, I mean, we, we planned on replacing some of this equipment and getting some of this equipment, um, but because of the amount, I did want the board to officially approve this. And it's computer equipment? It's, um, 
It's computer oh, it's our simple release. scan yeah. print release upgrading of our print release stations. Um, everything, like I said, this was planned for in the 2017 overall okay. budget out of the automation budget. How but much did you plan for about this one? Yes, you know? yeah, because we had gotten this pricing and, and everything. Okay. So, mm -hmm. I have a, oh, okay. go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve the TBS proposal in the amount of eighteen thousand one hundred ten dollars. I'll second. Gonzalez? Yes. Ready? Yes. Yes. Marzone? Yes. Novick? Yes. Palatier? Yes. Well, there's many, many ones. Right? Yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Bishop Plumley. Um, So this is why Dave has put in the day that he did today. Um, so he's here. This. So in addition to everything oh, that happened in the kitchen, the, the head, so he could have gone home. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, no and I didn't even think about that either. I'm sorry, Dave. Um, so in addition to the issue that we have with the kitchen, um, problem that we have with the sump pump motor, problem that we have with the electrical phasing, um, we did have some flooding in the staff bathrooms, um, which you saw during the walkthrough. A little kind of they're awful. I know. Yes. Um, we had to have the, the pipes rotted out, so we did have some issue with people um, disposing of uh, sanitary napkins, those kinds of not sanitary napkins, but um, feminine hygiene products, that sort of thing, in the pump. So they've been rotted out. Some pump motor has been replaced. Um, Dave wanted to replace the toilet in the men's bathroom and discover that all the galvanized piping is rotting. So I will let Dave talk about what we discovered and of this course. is the quote. Is there anything else to, to, to uh, discover things? Oh, I know. Um, we, we don't think in that area, but that's why our hope is that we can get this done. But Dave can talk a little bit more about um, do what we There is 2018 to do things. Yeah. There is. There's other things to do. Yes. So, like Pam said, I you know I was the guts in the the one toilet were were beyond repair, so I was going to change them. And as I got into it, the toilet just started falling apart, literally. Um, and so I took it out and you know turned off the water as you would. Um, and this was on a Friday. It was you know and right before I left and you know Scott was here afterwards no problem well he came in the next day and said there's water all over the kitchen and I said what <laughs> um, thinking the sump pump but no it turns out that the valve on the uh, pipe coming out of the wall going to the toilet failed overnight so um, the quick shut off place one of the knobs broke uh, it was so rusted on and then, so we had to go further back which right now doesn't present a problem but as we go forward since it's cutting it off to the hot water heater we will need that hot water heater um, so I had Bishop come back out and uh, as we were talking the old turnstile shutoff bells are no longer up to code so th this is where we go into the okay if we're going to start changing stuff here then we are you know, we lose our grandfather status. So, <laughs> uh, so and it being galvanized, at least I'm, I'm guessing thirty years old at a minimum. So it's it's seen oh, better days, probably. probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's going to require the middle wall uh, between the two bathrooms to come completely down so they can access all the piping in there. And this would be changing out the piping to the toilets and the sinks. Um, in the women's bathroom, or what was the women's bathroom, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to remove part of the ceiling so we can get to the piping up in there as well. And then we will put in new up to code ball joints inside the, uh, in the pump room. And hopefully that. Going and both bathrooms are going to do toilets? Yes, both bathrooms are going to do toilets. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, what did you say? So, the new this quote is? Pretty much. Okay, yeah. The piping is uh, the same thing with the electrical where it's cut off in that area and then everything else, or is it something that runs if they replace it? They have to, you 
said with the grandfather in? Um, no, we we would be okay back there. It's a separate area, and it's. A, Those are not connected to any other toilets right. that we would have to address. Okay. And all other plumbing has been addressed now in that area between the kitchen and the sump pump. Yeah. And then um, this would just be addressing. So everything at that end of the building would be taken care of. I want free shipping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, I can think of. <laughs> it, it is what it is. It, it is what it is, and right yeah. now those bathrooms are closed, yeah. Yeah. and um, a significant yeah. number of the staff do use them. Right. So, um, so you know, you our fear is that if we don't do something, um, or we only fix one little part of it, as galvanized pipe is as want to do, if one part of it's bad, the rest of it is probably bad, or will go bad. So, and the mission plumbing we've used before, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we have a very we have a good relationship long with and good them. relationship with them. Yeah. So um, okay. if they're very familiar with their building. We trust them. Yeah. Okay. I will motion. Wait, I have another question. Oh, okay. So when you tear down these walls to put all these new pipes in, which will be PVC or? Uh, it'll be a mix of PVC copper. and a little bit of copper. Okay. The copper won't be in the walls. It'll be out in the actual pump room right, right, going right, to right. the valves. Right. And they'll right. train with you. Have access to. So when you yeah. take down these, the way I'm reading this is Bishop will take it down. So no, I, I will take it down. Take, oh, so you will take it down. I will down take it down and, it and I will put it up. Oh, okay. So I will take that wall down to the studs. It's the old sheet rock. Correct. Yeah. And then I will replace it with, you know, mold resistant drywall when we, uh -huh. when we redo it. And then the ceiling is the little one by one uh, ceiling tiles that as I found out in the kitchen, are glued onto drywall that runs across the top. So. <laughs> what kind of tree do you think it's, it's up to you. <laughs> you know, as we talked about when we did the washroom, I think they should have left it alone. There's a lot tonight just because of everything that's been happening, but, you know, it is an aging facility. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. kinds of issues that, that we How much address. money will be left in that? But so after, after this, this, three hours and 44 cents. <laughs> <laughs> right. After this, um, not that that's going to affect my decision. Right? So <laughs> it will be approximately. It, does this money really exist? It does really exist. Um, <laughs> we'll still have approximately $10,000 left. Okay, so something. Yes, okay. it depends on someone's little growth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, so we would still have money um, okay. in, that, in that account. Okay. Yeah. All right, I, does anybody else have any questions? <laughs> All right, I will motion to approve. You like your name on money, don't you? Yeah, I guess. The Bishop Plumbing proposal for $11,995 and zero cents. Okay. People can address their angry letters to me for all the money spent this evening. Um, come on, don't. Yes. No, yes. Oh, that's here. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright, communications? Those cute little notes. Thank you for coming. Thanks. 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 Um, communications, uh, several just really nice thank you notes. Um, uh, MB Financial uh, gave us money for our uh, the library, the oh, National Library Card sign up one prizes. So um, we got a letter from them. Um, they're also, if you haven't noticed, um, on the cover of Books and Beyond, uh, we do thank them for their generous donation for that. And then, like I said, some very nice thank you notes for. Does that come out already? The September, or October one? I don't remember seeing it. Oh, you should have. I didn't get it either. I didn't get like in the mail. Yeah, I don't think I've, now that you say that, I don't feel like I've. That should because it should have gone out. Yeah, you should get it at the it. end of the pre previous month, so you should have gotten it in August. Okay. My neighbor was collecting my mail while we well, were gone. That's why I got it in August. I don't remember the Because it, it usually it does come out before that month I, that it that it's in. If there's nothing that draws my attention, it's so well, I usually oh. look through all the programming of the kids. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I have yeah. to get the September. I, I don't see it. I look for the adult. Okay, I will. Um, 
It took us I'll double check. check. I haven't even grown okay. up yet. Because so the way that works is we send um, the newsletter files to our printer, and then and they they, they handle the right. postage or the, the okay. postal. I mean, and we got our. We then normally get a delivery. I had a lot that. of mail to go through okay. when I got home, but I, that is usually something I you I, I go through and I don't remember. Because on the cover of it. this one is um, the Sarah Peretsky. So, oh, the mystery author. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember so, that because she's coming in. I think it's. Okay. So if that rings any bells. So okay, I will um, have Karina look into that. Make sure that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So those are just like I said, some nice thank you notes from people for communications. Um, that's all I have. To all right. Now we've mentioned <laughs> a few times. I will let you. Okay. Um, I thought we could at least start, especially since it's getting a little bit later, we can look at the spreadsheet. If anyone wants me to pull it up on the computer and we can plug different numbers in, I'm happy to do that. Um, if we don't need to do that, it makes things a little bit easier for me and possibly for Stephanie, but like, I'm always happy to do that. Scooch. Um, so uh, what you have is the big spreadsheet that has, uh, as I said in my, some of my notes, um, the final 2017 budget numbers, what was approved in terms of um, our expected revenues and our expe expected expenditures. Um, my estimations for where we're going to end up at the end of 2017 based on you know what we spent so far, what I know is coming up, um, and that was as of the other job, uh, just one day right before I did this, I made, uh, went through and made adjustments to that. Um, what expenditures would look like and what would be impacted if we kept the levy flat, meaning that we didn't ask for any more money to be that we didn't ask for the levy to be anything more than it was last year. Um, and then my recommendation this year is for a 1% increase in the levy, the tax levy itself. Um, and then I gave you some other uh, scenarios. Um, if the board approved uh, further increases, most of that money would go towards uh, the construction and progress <laughs> budget so that we could address other facilities <laughs> issues. What percentage did we do last year? 3%. 3%. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, we did 3% last year, but I, I feel pretty comfortable with the 1% increase. Um, A, because I want to be, you know, sensitive to people's, you know, situations. None of us like our taxes to go up. I totally get that. Um, but I really feel that the 1% increase allows us to do, um, this actually then allows us to do, to fill most of the departmental requests for different types of equipment, uh, you know, increased programming dollars, um, you know, moving some monies around in terms of, you know, maybe away from print, but putting that towards increased um, magazine expenditures for Flipster, as I explained, and, and some Is other things like there that. there anything in specific that would be lost by that? Doing the one percent. Well, you, there's certainly um, yes. There will be things that would. I mean, at least the way that I have it broken down right now. If we didn't um, raise it at all, uh, I I would try to keep a a, a salary increase uh, for merit increases right. this year. Right. Um, so I would definitely try to keep that. Where we would see differences would be in um, slight decrease in, in programming money. Uh, uh, there's some things that we just can't change, uh, I don't yeah, know, contractual or legally right. obligated, that kind of thing. Where we would see the biggest differences is probably in what we could put towards building uh, related expenses. Um, so if you take a look at the 7,000 account lines, you'll see some differences there. Um, a little bit in printing, um, I did want to keep the promotion and publicity line pretty high this year and for next year. It's the library's 80th anniversary, and so I figured we would want to be doing some different things for that um, that we don't normally do. Um, Is that an area that we could do some kind of fundraising donations? We could. Um, yeah. What I would, I, mean, I think it's a good opportunity to solicit funds. I don't know that it would be, I don't. I don't know that we would be able to, I don't know that I would want to rely on the potential donations to yeah. do anything I for that. But I think it's a I'm, really good opportunity to solicit I'm funds. I'm just wondering if it wouldn't be a way to get a friends group going and... Yeah, I think that, in, I mean, that's certainly a way to look at that, you know, and kind of in conjunction with that, but I don't know how much funds would be coming in. Like if we wanted to do, 
You know, so for example, maybe this year we wanted to do a float for the 4th of July parade because it's a big anniversary for us, or we wanted to, you know, do some other special programming that's associated with the 80th anniversary. But I think that the 80th anniversary opens up some other possible ways that we could generate interest in maybe joining a friends or foundation mm -hmm. group again because of that. Absolutely. But I don't know that I would rely on that in order to yeah, fund some other things. Yeah, you can rely on donations. Right. So, um, so there would be some changes by staying, I, you know, we'd, we wouldn't be able to do quite as much if we left the levy flat. Um, you know, but that's, that's up to the board, but um, um, I want to do that. Well, programming, I think, is one of the areas where you mentioned there probably have to be cuts, and I think that's, other than being able to check out materials, I think that's where people probably see the most value. And based on everything we just approved now, I would be wary to cut too much in terms of um, the building. Yeah. yeah. As I said, next year, um, I think it would be cutting off your nose to spite your face and you might have right side. Right. Um, the big expenditures for next year that at least we're planning on, Dave and I had um, discussions. We went through the facilities audit mm -hmm. as well and kind of you know went through and figured out what we had done already, you know, what things really could wait. Like, you know, the, when the engineers, the architects and engineers originally created that, they had things on there like, you know, painting the interior. Well, I, we don't need to worry about that, you know, right. painting, you know, resurfacing. There's some different things that we could put off. So he and I have gone through and what we're looking at in terms of big expenditures next year would be um, replacement of all gutters and fascia from, from the outside of the building, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, uh, repair or replacement of the porch and the stairs and the sidewalks. There's been, um, those have been patched. Um, some places better than others, and so uh, we would like to, to fix that. Um, we also no longer have a sign in the front of the building. Mm -hmm. so. Um, and I've gotten a number of quotes on uh, replacing signage and getting something that's more than just a wooden sign, and those run about sixteen thousand dollars. And I would like for us to look at the village sign. Codes there yes, there be would check. absolutely have to be village codes. Yeah. There was at some point I can't remember what it was even anymore. Then we were looking into electronic signs. Yeah. Which I would love to have. Yes. But uh, I'm not sure they'll allow us. Well, we would definitely have to look at that. The other thing is a digital sign would be awesome. They run usually thirty to forty thousand dollars a year. So I looked at some other things that are would still be nice, but would be cheaper. But certainly, if that's um, you know if that ends up something being something that we have funds for, we could do that. Um, I agree with Stephanie that I would be reluctant to to ask for much less. <laughs> I think a one percent increase is. It allows us to do a lot of different things, and it's not, I don't think, overly worth I see a real significant difference, and I must be missing something. It's construction and construction right. and mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I mean, that's like less than was budgeted for this year. Right. And but because we're, we're increasing the expenditures in a number of other lines that we typically haven't in the past, that that construction and progress number that's where we're seeing most of the difference either if we kept right. the levies flat or if we did more than right that's what I was, yeah was trying to and say. So that, that's where if we did the lighting and the shelving i mean if this building doesn't sell it sounds to me like we really need to do the we'll shelving and the shelving. lighting and exactly. the services no, and nothing else yeah. and you think that if the one percent if that's sufficient with the light, you know, and all the, yeah, there's another, hopefully there's another well, staff. I, I will say this, I mean, should the board want to increase that budget line more, we can do that. And, and the other thing is that you don't need to be locked into the percentage increases. I do that because it's an easy way to present the information. If, for example, you say, I want to keep everything in the 1% budget line exactly the same, but I want to make sure that we have $100,000, for example, in the construction and progress budget line, you can do that because when we when we submit this to the village, we submit a dollar amount. We ask them to, to levy a total dollar amount. Yeah, they don't but we know don't they don't look at percentages or anything like that. So so that could be one way that we look at that. Um, but so you don't like I said, just the percentages is an easy yeah, way for me to think about the, okay. the budgeting. And I mean, most of the changes are pretty fl are flatter. 
Yeah, they're, I mean, there's not a lot of them that are in the only one that, is that the, sticks out is the construction, mm -hmm. and that is obviously our weak area. I would say, yeah. I mean, it would depend on. Um, I do think the building will sell. Yeah, I mean, I, but but Stephanie's right. If for some reason it doesn't, the only reason it, I I hesitate on it is when we when we bought it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. us brilliant people. Uh, he had lowered the price considerably right. to get us to buy it, basically, and that's where I. Well, I think some of it is that I mean, you as a you had you had a, you were limited by some other things that maybe a private right. organization right. is not. So. Um, well, that's true. And I do right. think, and the other thing to keep in mind is that even if we end up selling the building for, say, 300000 coming down significantly, whatever, I mean, because we haven't adjusted the price at all at this point. Well, it's still the listed. Price when when the library bought it for $250,000, right. and then there was, they had some, like, they had to pay, like, a year and a half of the taxes because of different things like that before okay. it became non Well, we did put some work into it. So I figured out when we, I don't think you were on the board yet, Joanne, but, um, when we first uh, were thinking about putting it up for sale, um, the board asked me to figure out how much money had gone into it. So the purchase price was 250 and then various other relatively minor expenditures. We ended up, we've put $292,000 into the building. And there was some piping for so, the, uh, You mean total or total? total? Okay. Yeah. So no, that's that's the no, 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 no. That, that's total. Okay. So, yeah. so it was forty-two thousand extra. Yeah. Okay. Um, besides the two. So what are so, we actually asking? Okay. What are we actually? Right asking? now we're asking four hundred fifty-nine thousand dollars. Okay. So we have not. We had multiple showings. So we've had multiple we showings. Realize. We do have someone who's interested. I don't know what kind of offer they may or may not make. Um, It'd be great if we get four hundred. And just seeing if we want the the break-even point. Yeah, I mean, actually, if we even if we got three hundred, we would kind of break even. But the other thing is that. Um, but then the board doesn't get their share. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you keep jipping us. I know, I know. I know. But uh, so I, you know, I I think I feel very comfortable with the one percent increase. I feel like that seventy two thousand five hundred dollars in that construction progress budget um, would cover the things that we're thinking about doing. Um, actually, it gives us a really big cushion um, because. The things like the gutters and fascias and the, the porch, the gutters and fascias for sure um, would be included in building maintenance, and that's why I asked for 93000 in that budget line, because in addition to our regular building and maintenance, which is about forty-five dollars to $50,000 a year, we're giving ourselves another 45000 or so to cover that kind of thing. And this is also the cost of the, uh, everything for the, for if it was done, if the building sold would go towards, uh, through for... The proceeds of the building would go towards this and wouldn't come out of any of that budget. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And that's my plan because um, we only owe at this point um, less than a year's worth. So if you look at the budget, if you look at the um, 950 budget line, um, the loan, the principal. So for 2018, we'll only owe $52,000 for that. So that's the loan I thought was tied to that uh, 209000 So No, that's completely separate. So. Um, so that the, the if you look at the budget, and we're talking about that two hundred eight thousand is um, that's retirement forty fifty, mm -hmm. and that line I really can't do anything with. Like I don't have a lot of room with that line because oh, okay. I own I, I own I own, we owe um, we have set uh, IMRF costs which are based on salaries, and then that set. Uh, Exactly. I was so as I'm preparing the budget, I always try to um, I, my revenues I estimate low, and my expenditures I estimate high, just to make sure that we've got enough money to, to cover everything. The library will close in thirty minutes. And then it allows us that you know if those expenditures come in lower for whatever reason, or we don't do something, or you know get a better deal on something. That allows us to be able to put that money into special reserves as well. So. so, does anyone have any questions about either my notes or the budget or want to see? Yeah, your notes are very helpful. Yeah, they were her Yeah, I you know, it's it can be overwhelming. As I said, I think it was really it was it was um, useful for the staff to see this as well. We went over a few different things, so they understood kind of what was involved with this. That I wasn't just sitting in my office, right? Like, you know, what what we should doing up there, kind of thing. So, um, so this uh, the board has at uh, the past few years wanted to have first and second readings of the budget. So this is what we would consider our first yeah, reading. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be you know, it's supposed to make sure that the public. Yeah, and that's absolutely fine. Um, 
When does this do? I did not get a chance to contact the village. Um, I need to do that. Our next meeting is October 12th. Oh, did you get my email about the November? Yes, I did get that. Um, so, we should be okay. I don't think we would need to have a special board meeting. We could yeah, have a second reading at the October meetings. meeting. Yeah, that is a good shape right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess going forward, um, is there anything? So, there's, I, sorry, let me take a step back. Barb did ask me. Um, to prepare um, some numbers if we, we had talked about briefly, uh, you know, how we, how the salaries of staff compared to area libraries and stuff, and what would it look like if we raised the lowest paid um, position oh, yeah. to $10, so $1.50 an hour raise. Um, it's, it's, it can be kind of difficult to redo your entire salary schedule, so I didn't do that, so I just, I did, what I did do was say, okay, to keep everyone uh, in the same place relative to everyone else. I broke down everyone's, um, I gave all my hourly people a $1.50 raise, <laughs> and I broke down my salaried uh, people to hourly and said, okay, if I gave, if I, if I made everyone, if I gave everyone a $1.50 an hour raise, how much more money would that be? Um, and uh, unless actually the board wants to raise the levy by like 3% again, <laughs> I figured that it would be an extra $200,000 a year um, just for the salary. That wouldn't include, that doesn't include any increases um, that we would have uh, in FICA or IMRF. So um, I have done some pretty extensive uh, research into area libraries and we're actually not far away from the uh, most of our other neighboring libraries were pretty comparable. One of the things that I did include in the budget for next year, and I think I noted it, is that I did want to have an official salary survey oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. in 2018 so that we can make any adjustments to the schedule that we need to. Um, I think Deborah, a few years ago, uh, did not have a, a, a full salary right, uh, survey done. It was in kind of in conjunction with some management association right. people, but we didn't have a full one done. Well, and the biggest fault on that one's been eliminated. So, so I think that this would be a good time, given that you know we made some pretty substantial adjustments last year in preparation for the now not taking place changes in FLSA, but um, that brought us up to where I think we're pretty comfortable, and I think with increases for this year. Um, so I don't think we're that far off yeah. for some of that. What I what I did notice going forward, and this is kind of why I want to have some come in and look at it and help me with this, and you know, compare it to other libraries and, and get us on the right track, is I think our page, our shelver positions are fine. I mean, that's not that far off what other people are are, are um, paying. Our professional and positions are are fine. Um, where I think that we could probably stand to see some increases in, uh, we don't we could do this next year when we do the, the salary survey, um, is some of our clerk positions, some of, like at circulation and that sort of thing. I think those are the positions that at least after you know the research that I've done to compare you know the numbers, that's where I'm seeing some of the um, that we may need to look at that. Things. Yeah, some of that. But I'm, I'm just always concerned with the number of people that leave. But I know, <coughs> well, I know that it's not salary. I know it's the it is, it, of it isn't. Of people. right. I mean, and actually, our circulation staff has been fairly stable. Um, where we're seeing um, changes is like the computer assistance, and some of that is just yeah. it's That's it's kind of the nature right. of the position. So you know, and there's always a balance that um, you know between. Uh, you want some continuity, but it's always a, it's always nice to get fresh ideas and fresh blood too. So, um, so you know, it's kind of our goal is to, to achieve that. And I know that we've talked about it in the past about, um, you know, in terms of some of the professional positions, we are, for many people, the first professional library job that they have. And um, they learn a lot here because they do a little bit of everything. And, and then they do, sometimes some of them do go other places and sometimes they stay. But 
you know, one of the things that Natalia and I have talked about a lot, the head of adult services and I, is the idea that if that's the role we play, then that's the role we play. I mean, that's just, I mean, it's the nature of the size of the library we are. It's, it's not yeah, unusual. It's the size of the library. It's right. the size I mean, of the town. It's exactly. The whole thing. So, um, but, you know, our goal is, is to kind of achieve that balance where... Which is um, our problem is we're next door to, to Skokie right. and Glenview. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, and that, it, we have to consider that. But on the other hand, we're never going to be Skokie or Glenview mm -hmm. or Nile. I mean, we just, we just don't have that same task list. So, you know, it's just kind of a balance. But, you know, I mean, we have staff that love being here, and, and there's a lot of staff that want to come here and want to do this, and they want to be able to do everything. You know, they want to be, they don't want to focus on just kind of one thing. So, um, that's where we're at. So anyway, I did want to talk about that because I know that that was something that you had asked for. So I think that at least doing it that way is um, financially not feasible for us, but I do want, and as I said, I did budget to, to do a salary survey for next year. Um, so then I guess my other question is, is there anything that the board would like to see changed? For the second reading, I can change now so we can see what that number looks like. Are you fairly comfortable kind of moving forward with this document? Um, I, I'm comfortable with asking this. I don't know if we can write that. Just a question. Uh -huh. the, uh, the breakdown you had, Aaron, and I know this is, uh, you have some in a, is it a one number and it's internal, but the uh, breakdown per household from the, for per, per percentage point. Is that basically if it's 1% uh, that's that number and then if it's 2% it's just double that number? Is that, that right? In terms of what it would be per household, like when I said yeah, four, at, you know, at the end? Yeah. Um, you know, that's an average based on the number of households mm -hmm. and the breakdown. The first page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so it's you know, like yeah, percent. pretty much, because if we looked at 2%, I mean, basically we would just divide that up by, so we would look at, so when we talk about it, so basically the number that we're looking at that we asked the village for is that first nine, the number, that 3,100 number. Okay. That's what we asked the village for because the rest of these things we show the village, but we're not asking them to levy any of those taxes. So, oh, that's what, that's what so that's what we look at. So if, if a 1% increase in the levy, which we ask for, you know, 3,338,000, blah, 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 I mean, I can divide it for you. Is you know four. You wrote out what each number is at the top. Here. Right, but yeah, so he's asking if what it would cost per household. Per household. Right, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and I don't think it would be double it, but it might. Uh, math is not right. <laughs> Thank God for Excel. Mm -hmm. What did I say? How many households? Eighty-nine. Eighty-one. Eighty-one nine nine. Eighty-one nine nine. all the rates, you know, I mean, that's that's, that's, that's a ballpark because no, I mean, yeah. rates change and that kind of thing. Well, and that 3% came after well. three years of no raises. Pardon? That 3% came was It was a couple years, yeah. It was I mean, and three years, actually. Yeah, and I, you know, that's the other thing, too, is that it didn't pass this year, but, you know, they are still talking in, in the Illinois legislature about freezing property taxes, and um, <laughs> if that should happen, well, I, I mean, if that should happen, then I want to make sure that we're at a place that I feel like if we had to keep things flat for the next few years, could we do that? And I think, you know, giving us a little bit more this year when we know that we can still get that and it's a reasonable amount in terms of taxes. Yeah, so the 2% would be an $8 increase per household. So, but like I said, I feel, um, again, trying to balance that, you know, can I feel like, you know, that myself and you as board members defend a 1% increase 
you know, that would allow us to, you know, continue to do the things that we do really well and address our building issues and some other things while still being cognizant and sensitive to people's individual tax situations. So, um, I would say if there's no changes, if the board is pretty comfortable with this, for the second reading, I can prepare, can keep it as a draft, but I can then also prepare the documentation that we have to send to the village so that you can approve the final numbers then and we can get that sent off to them. Mm -hmm. So if that's okay. And certainly if there's, you know, after you look this over and you have other questions or want me to try out different scenarios, I'm happy to do that um, in the interim. Okay, that was reasonable. Yeah. And of course, you have to you have to do this every year. Yeah. That's totally fine. I mean, this is if I'm I'm pleased the board likes this presentation because it, it it's the easiest for me as well, and I think it it helps you guys to understand my thought process and what goes into the creation of this and um, makes this whole discussion I think go a lot more smoothly than. Executive session. I would I would like to go into executive session. Oh, too, okay. So if that's okay. Oh, yeah. So, um, here's the. Uh, um, you have to read the. Under the. For this reason. Okay. Um, I will. I will motion to go into executive session for five Illinois CS one twenty. Slash two, section eight. Yeah. Yeah. For the security, and I just read it. For the security procedures, school building, safety and security, and the use of personnel and equipment to respond to an actual, a threatened, or a reasonably potential danger to the safety of employees, students, staff, the public, or public property. Get all in. I'm going to say somebody needs to second it. I will second it. And then that has to be a roll call. Um, so, Stephanie made the motion. Yes. Okay. Her last second. Okay. Pelletier? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gonna... Gonzalez? Yes. Gray. Yes. 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 Yes